What's up, ladies and gentlemen of the world? Today I'm gonna take out a guitar I haven't, you know, played that much, to be honest. What could it be? It's this case right here. You know what this is? This is a Skervason case. Now, Skervason is a Polish brand, and they made me a guitar in exchange for a video. That's a pretty good deal, I must say. This was a couple of years back. They just basically gave me an empty sheet of paper and said, Hey, what do you want? We got you. And I was like, okay, cool. I mean, you have a bunch of cool uh, shapes out there, but I really like this one, which is called the Swan. I mean, look at this. A little close up, maybe. I mean, look at that. It's a nice little poplar burl right there. And as you can see, it's multi-scaled. It has this little uh, bottle opener headstock right there. And uh, yeah, looks really good. Looks like this at the back. Look at that neck. F***ing hell, that's pure sex. I wonder if I still have the specs somewhere. D yes. No. These are not the specs. This is just a nice warranty thing happening there. I don't remember the specs, damn it. Do I have the email somewhere? Maybe I can check it. I think I received this guitar like mid-2017, actually. And uh, let me see if I can find the uh, specs for this thing. Skirvason is basically a Polish builder, and they've been on it for a good while now, making custom shop guitars. I have hip shot locking tuners right there. I don't remember what the f*** these pickups are, man. I have to get my computer. Shit. Okay. Hi, I'm Ola, and this Hello, Ola. Is Thank God for my old videos where I actually put the f specs in the video. It's a 25 inch to 26 inch scaled length, multi scale. So it's a little shorter on the treble side, okay? And then we have 26 on the heavier side. Swamp ash body with bobinga middle layer. So this little layer right there is bobinga. And then we have the poplar burl, obviously. Five piece wenge and bubinga neck right there. Stainless steel frets, bare knuckle war pig and VH2 pickups. Hmm, holy shit. ABM cells, hip shot locking tuners, Dunlop strap locks, Ivoroid neck and headstock binding. It's this one right here. As you can see, this weird little thingy. Lumilay fretboard and side dots. World domination mod. What is that? Is that uh, this, this is one of these, I guess, which I guess is kind of like making something hot or f do I know? Anyways, I'm gonna pimp this guitar right here and see you, Mr. Camera. How you doing? Hello. Are you okay? Hello. <laughs> okay. Good talk. Good talk right there. Okay. <laughs> All right, we're back on track. So I'm gonna restring this guitar. I'm gonna. You know, fix the fretboard a little bit, clean it up, and then I'm gonna play it. I'm looking forward to it. I need to decide on a string set for this. Is this 44? Blacksmith strings, great. Uh, I don't know the thickness, but let's just uh, check it out, I guess. Me, 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 me. I really like this case. It's like a really badass flight case for this thing. Uh, that's nice. That's a nice touch. I like that. You know, you buy an expensive guitar and you get a sick-ass case for it. That's, uh, uh, that's awesome. It doesn't say the thickness on these, but I guess these are like a 10 to 52 uh, blacksmith strings. Blacksmith are the strings we've been using on the solar guitars. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna clean up a little bit, see ya. So we're gonna do what we normally do, and that is to just... ...de-string the guitar, man. I was wondering, maybe I should put my camera up on the wall so it doesn't, like, bounce around like this. Is that a good idea? Maybe in five years, <laughs> when I've upped my game totally. But right now, you know, it's just YouTube, man. People don't give a shit if it's shaking a little bit. There you go. Unlock the locking tuners. Like this. Hello. Oh. Oh. Eh. Ah. There you go. Baby, baby, baby face. Yeah, uh, uh, hang on. What's your problem? Little batch. Little batch. Great. Oh, oh, okay. As you can see here, these are just resting in this weird ass bridge right there, like this. And then when you 
take off the strings. She's like, oh, you just lift them off. So you don't have to cut them or anything like that. That's some good, uh, I actually don't know what that's good for, but uh, we're just saying it's really good. That is, I mean, look at this. Look at this right here. Huh? So one cool little thing that they have here that I actually really like is that they have this. It's a little piece of wood with foam on it that is placed here to dampen the strings above the nut, which is kind of cool. I, I like that idea. Uh, it's not fixed, so it's just placed there, you know, and uh, you just rest the strings in there. So let me clean this bullshit off. La 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 la, cha cha cha, sha la la in the morning. Sha la 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 la, la la la, I don't care. I do care. I do care a lot. Oh shit, I mean, that's a pretty nice looking fretboard. I'll, I'll use some of this, the deep conditioner thing. You know, I haven't really been using this guitar a lot, so I can't imagine it being really nasty or anything like that. So I'm just gonna clean this with this little, you know, penis clean face that I have. Cleany face, cleany face, cleany face. This is actually the first multi-scale guitar that I've ever owned. So I'm not really used to multi-scale guitars, but I like it like this when there's not that much of a fan going on. If it's too wide of a fan, you can have problems over here when you want to kind of like, if you want to put a bar chord on the first fret. It's a little weird. Uh, maybe I can show you that later, but uh, right now I'm just going to work this in. That, just conditioning the fretboard right now, so it's nice and moist. Just like my groin. My groin is really nice and moist right now. It, and it's not a disease that I have. <laughs> it's just me being really moist right now. <laughs> Oli, you're saying so many good things right now. It's gonna be a problem for you when people start commenting on your video. Like, is it really moist down there? Who knows? That's a nice and clean fretboard. I mean, this guitar definitely deserves a lot more love and uh, it's gonna be really exciting. It's gonna be really nice to play this thing later. All right, okay, so now this is gonna be interesting. I slapped this little stringy in that hole, string hole, then I go about doing this. I mean, I have to kind of put pressure on this, otherwise it will just get loose and oh, fly away. But I don't want you to fly away. You're not free, my little buddy. You're not free. What? Doesn't go through? Oh, there it is. Thank God. Thank Lord Almighty. Oh. Okay. It's in there. Drop Q. I don't recall how this guitar sounded, to be honest, uh, with... Oh, see? It went free there. Free bird, basically. It went free bird. Doesn't want to go in there. Come on, little free bird. So, no, I don't really recall what this guitar sounded like. I'm not the absolute best friends with bare knuckle pickups. I think they're usually a little bit too voiced or a little bit too modern voiced. Where I consider, you know, the pickup... A pickup for me should be pretty flat sounding in my opinion. Now why is this? Well, I think it's just having a flat pickup is just better because, you know, it's easier to match it up and let the amplifier do the work for you. If you have two voices of a pickup, you know, some amplifiers can sound, you know, a little too harsh and extreme. With voiced pickups, you know, they can make a classic amplifier sound really, really awesome and really, really super nice. I know bare knuckles, they work really well with, you know, uh, like dual rectifiers, for instance, or a PV5150. That's a really good match right there. But if you use voiced pickups in a modern sounding amplifier, it, it can become a little bit too shrill sounding. And that's where like a flat pickup is just letting, you know, the amplifier do the tone magic. So I much more prefer flat and, you know, ordinary sounding pickups. Okay. Well, this is nice. This is the good thing about having locking tuners. It's just, it's just way quick, man. What is this? Oh, Ooh. okay. The, uh, the tuner is a little loose. That's okay. That's what do we have this for? Oh shit, this one was also loose. I mean, it's not that big of an issue. They're not gonna move. I'm just gonna 
do it all around here. All the tuners. Oh well, I mean, sometimes it's really good to just go through your guitar and uh, you know, and just screw the screws a little bit because obviously, you know, you're working with wood right here. Wood is gonna move around, so it's always good to check the screws occasionally. Okay, we're gonna tune this guitar to now to penis. That's my favorite tuning, the penis tuning. P E N I S. That's just five letters. And this is a six string guitar. Well, okay. How about draw penis? <laughs> okay, I decided for a classic, we're gonna go drop C, baby, which is standard D with the lowest string being drop C. I like using this pocket tuner. I've showed it to you before, but basically, I like to tune by ear. So, baby. I also like to say baby in between. Baby, baby. That sounds great. Can you shut up for a second? Listen, it's making this weird noise. Kiss that. The cool thing about this pocket guitar is that you can play a shit bunch of cool chords on here. So, like, Scare Vason. You're beautiful. Great. All right, let's cut some strings. Nice and sleek cutting here by Ola the Cutterer, right here. And this is gonna be the tightest f tightness you've ever tightened. So now, it's gonna do a little string stretching, you know? I showed this to you already. You have one string underneath the string, and then you have the thumb and you press. Basically stretching the string uh, all over. And you go string by string. Make sure it's nice and stretched. Ah! It made a fun sound. That was fun. When you've been tuning by ear a lot, you eventually come to this part where you just need the first, you know, reference tone. Then you'll immediately hear the other one. So that's a little good practice for you. Just try and tune by ear. It forces you to uh, practice your ear, basically. Okay. That's great. Oh my god, it's really, really awesome. The only thing that I'm a little concerned about when I'm holding it like this is that I feel the body itself is really, really lightweight, and the neck definitely feels heavier. I'm gonna check with the strap locks, actually, see, see how it will react. Okay, it's one of these that I never use. Okay, putting on the pin. No, there you go, that's a pin. You know, I'm holding it like this, like if I had a strap, it works. Definitely works. It's not neck heavy at all. I was a little bit worried that it would be neck heavy, but it's not. Look at this. All right, F me in the ass, man. Look at that. It's done. So I'm ready to go try this thing. Let's go. All right, all right, all right, all right. Num, num. So I'm not sure you can see this, but the uh, input jack for this guitar is a little weirdly placed. But I like the detail. Kind of goes in behind. So from the front, it doesn't look too intrusive, but at the back. It does. So it's a, that's a nice little feature right there. I'm running the guitar straight into my audience face, and this is the Pliny plugin right here. So. That sounds really good.
it's definitely a little bit different to play on a multi-scale like this. You know, because of the fan, you can see the frets are angled a little bit like this, in this direction, and you know, it forces you to kind of move your hand like this. I'm exaggerating right now just to show, but basically, you know, if you want to play a chord here, in drop C, you have to angle your fingers. So it definitely feels a little bit weird playing, I'm not used to it. Okay, I'm very excited to try out this domination thing again. I don't remember what that did. Okay, this is the pickup selector right here. So, neck pickup. Guess this is split. Okay, I guess this is the world domination switch right here. So, let's try it out, okay? I can't hear a difference between this and this, but here it sounds split. It's definitely a lot more noisy as well. Okay. This sounds a little bit more scooped, maybe, in this position right here. Listen. Yeah, I think this position right here has a little bit more mid-range to it. That's the split right there, so I think this one sounds the best. I'm not sure exactly what happens, but engage is a lot more noise. I don't know if it's like a split thing or something like that. So it probably uses one coil or something like that. I don't know. That's a little guess at least. But other than that, I think it plays really well.
Yes. I think it sounds absolutely kick ass. I think I have to get a little bit used to the fan fret because, you know, I'm getting a little bit fatigued when playing it. I have to spend way more time to get into this thing. I mean, the neck and all feels absolutely amazing to play, and feel wise, you know, it's, it's a great ass neck right there. And. I mean, the body shape might throw people off a little bit, but I think it's Skerritsen's coolest body shape out of all the ones that they have. The pickups, maybe not my absolute favorite pickup, but I think they sound really, really good. I mean, the detail work on this thing is just... It's just absolutely beautiful. They really, really did a kick-ass job with this guitar, and I'm very excited to have it. So there you go, that's my little My Guitar video for you. Hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, maybe put a thumbs up, subscribe, and see you next time. Thank you for watching. Bye!